Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tract and Truth Tuesday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. The Tract and Truth title is what we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts, and you have joined us for a great, great day, and you're quickly going to find out why. Now, I have my Bible open today to a very familiar verse out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's verse 58. If it's if you've never memorized this verse, I would encourage you to do that. I want to be an encouragement today, and I want to encourage all of us, me included, to continue on the good fight of faith and telling the gospel. Sometimes people say to me, Brother Mark, are, is anybody getting saved anymore? Wait till you hear the broadcast today. I hope that I will encourage you to continue on being a servant of the Lord. If you can right now, stop and turn in your Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Also get something on which you can jot down our contact information because I want to give you some tools to help you communicate the gospel, help you to pass along the gospel to people uh, around you. And those that tool is a gospel tract. I'm going to say more about that here in a moment. But today, today, I want to share with you a very encouraging note. Uh, it came uh, to me from the state of Idaho, this guy in Idaho. And yes, people do live in Idaho, and there are believers there, and there are local churches in Idaho who are actively telling the gospel. My friend, notes like the one I'm going to read you here in a moment really bless the, the socks off my life. Everybody needs encouragement. Our kids need encouragement. My grandchildren need encouragement. My wife, uh, her husband needs encouragement. Your pastor, my pastor needs encouragement. And so do radio preachers. Uh, Friend, if this radio broadcast is a blessing to you, would you let us know that? jot us a note, send us an email. Your notes and emails will strengthen my heart and they'll really bless our staff as well. So today I've got a story about a note I want to tell you and I got a track story to tell you. Uh, It's going to encourage us to do what 1 Corinthians 15 58 says. So let's get started here. I've got two tracks with me right now. And just in case you do not know what I mean by a track, I'm referring to a gospel track tract. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of how a sinner can be saved from their sin, from the condemnation of their sin, from their destiny in hell, and be given the gift of forgiveness, be given the gift of the Son of God who gives them everlasting life. Gospel tracks help us tell the gospel. I've got two here in my hand. One of them is designed pointedly to help you tell the gospel. It's entitled, It's Free. It is free. On the front cover, there's a wallet with some credit cards coming out of it, just simply as a design to help us find out and communicate the idea that the gospel we have to offer people is a gift. When you open this track up, all there is here. And the left-hand side are verses that say that salvation is free. Verses like John 10, 28. Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life. Revelation 22, 17. Whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. And there's others here. On the right-hand side of the track, you're going to find verses here that uh, this life, this salvation gift is found in God's risen Son. Romans three, uh, Romans 6, 23 is there. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're looking for a tool to have handy to help you tell the gospel, here it is. It's free. The other track in my hand here is entitled 
riding the religious merry-go-round. Riding the religious merry-go-round. Let me read you how the track begins. It says, merry-go-rounds are fun to ride, but they don't take you anywhere. Many people are attempting to reach heaven by merry-go-rounds. That word merry-go-rounds is in quotes, but it's futile. Read on to discover, and he talks about how that good works cannot save, but they make you feel good. Religion can't save, but it makes you feel good. Being sincere about your spirituality can't save you, but it makes you feel good. Then it asks this question, if you would die today, would you go to heaven, or are you depending on a quote-unquote merry-go-round to get you there? You can't ride the quote-unquote merry-go-round of good works, religion, or sincerity, but they'll never transport you to heaven. And then we have the verse here, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 4, by grace are you saved through faith. It's a great, great gospel tool, beautifully laid out here, riding the religious merry-go-round. Listen, my friend, at the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you three ways by which you can contact us. Do that. Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. We will send you free, free, free of charge a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. These two are in there along with 39 others. Get them from us and let's become partners together in the gospel. You know the verse out of uh, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty-eight. I hope that you do. The verse tells us to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. For you know that your labor is never in vain in the Lord. And that's what I want to encourage you with here today. In a moment, I'm going to read some other verses that encourage us to stay at what we're doing. Well, as I said this week in the mail, I got this note from a supporter in Idaho, and evidently his local church is actively looking for ways to touch their community with the gospel. Here's what the note says, and I'm quoting now. We just had our barbecue at our town's event center. The gospel was presented after the meal and after a presentation by a hunter and an elk caller. No, let me stop here. I didn't know there was such a thing as an elk caller, but evidently there is. I'm continuing on with the note now. Quote, 46 people responded by checking the box on their card that read, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior today. God is at work here, exclamation point, he said, end quote. That was his note, glory to God. The town there that he lives in, in Idaho, uh, where all this took place, has only a population of 1,100 people. To see that many receive the gospel and respond to the gospel was tremendous. This church who put on the dinner for hunters is having a tremendous impact on their town. Last Tuesday, I spoke about my trip to Cuba and how 167 publicly owned Christ as Savior there. Here in Idaho, 46 responded to the gospel. Beloved, the gospel is still working around the world. It works in our country, it works in your community, but it works when it's tried and when that gospel work is bathed and watered in the prayers of God's people. Let me tell you a track story right now. There is a lady who is in her 60s, and she uses our tracks all the time. She also teaches Bible studies at the county jail there in her area. Well, she was at the restaurant not long uh, before she wrote this, and she gave a track to the waitress along with her tip, and she asked the waitress to please read the track, and the waitress promised that she would. Well, two weeks later, this lady is at the jail teaching her Bible lesson. All of a sudden, the waitress comes in waving this track, and the waitress said this, and I quote, a lady gave me this track and asked me to read it. I did, and I prayed the prayer at the end. But that night I got in with some wrong friends, and well, here I am, end quote. Now, the waitress, the waitress didn't even recognize that it was the Bible teacher who was the one that gave her the track. Evidently, though, the God who saves the waitress's soul was also interested in seeing that waitress grow in grace and knowledge of, God, of the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. So God allowed her to go to jail. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, be uh, steadfast, unmovable, always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. 
for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That word abounding there, you know what it means? It means to be excessive. Are you excessive? Am I excessive in doing the work of the Lord? The word work there means employment. It's an activity we're called to do. You and I who know Christ have been called to tell the gospel. Jesus said it. You know the verses. Go ye therefore and preach the gospel to everybody. The word labor in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it's a word that means to toil and get weary and work. Beloved, anything worthwhile takes work and it's going to make you weary. You and I are told to abound in the work of the Lord. Let me give you three other verses here, if I might. This one's in Galatians 6, verse 9. It says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God said we shall reap. When we go tell the gospel, we're planting gospel seed. A farmer that plants fully expects to find a crop afterwards. You and I. We ought to sow the gospel with expectancy and water it with our prayer, expecting God to do what God promised to do. Our job is to plant the gospel seed. Only God can save a soul. Here's another verse, 2 Thessalonians 3.13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. It's amazing how the lost are never get weary of sinning, do they? It's amazing how that people who uh, like to go fishing never get weary of fishing and hunters never get weary of hunting and, well, sports people never get weary of playing basketball or whatever their sport is. But sometimes God has to remind us who are believers to not get weary in well-doing. What we're doing has eternal consequences. What we're doing today has rippling effects all over over the place. Here's one more verse for you. Hebrews 10, verse 36. It says this, for ye have need of patience. He's writing to believers now. Nobody needs to tell you. Nobody needs to tell me I need and you need patience. Amen. But the verse says this, and ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. It's amazing how everybody wants everybody, everything for nothing these days. You don't like it when you see it in other people. Well, friend, you and I have to first do the will of God, and then we receive the promise. We do the will of God. You know what God's will is that you and I tell the gospel. There are some things that I already know are the will of God. Number one, it's God's will for you to be saved. Number two, it's God's will for you to tell the gospel. It's God's will for you to be a person of prayer, and it's God's will for you to be part of a local Bible-preaching church. Are you obeying the will of God? If you're not obeying the will of God, don't expect the promise of God. But friend, let's not be weary in our well-doing. Friend, if you don't know Christ as Savior, you may be becoming weary and trying to earn your way to heaven, offering God this gift and that gift, and offering God this work and that work. Friend, you can't buy your way into heaven. It's a gift of God through his son. Jesus paid the price that you could be saved and we must receive it as a gift. Do that today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.